local, trusted. This is First News at 4 on KBTX News 3. You're watching First News at 4. We're checking out all things Black Friday and holiday season coming up a little later in the show. But first, a look at the day's headlines. We start with a look at active COVID-19 cases here in the Brazos Valley. Half of the counties in the Brazos Valley are in that red zone today, meaning they have over 100 active cases. Just Trinity, San Jacinto and Milam counties are below 20 active cases today. So if you're going out to Black Friday shop, please be careful. This is as close to widespread as COVID-19 has been in the Brazos Valley since the pandemic began. The FDA could be authorizing a coronavirus vaccine in a few weeks. The organization is holding an emergency use authorization meeting about Pfizer's vaccine early next month. Including in that meeting will be a panel of independent experts. The director of the FDA's Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research says a decision is expected within weeks, possibly days after that key meeting. So far, Pfizer is the only company to apply for an emergency use authorization form from the FDA for a coronavirus vaccine. As you chow down on your Thanksgiving leftovers, Mariah Carey is getting you ready for Christmas. On Friday, the star released the trailer for her upcoming Apple TV Plus special, Mariah Carey's Magical Christmas Special. Actress Tiffany Haddish lends her voice to the event as narrator, and you'll see familiar faces like Ariana Grande, Jennifer Hudson, and Snoop Dogg making guest appearances. The festive special is based on Carey's 1994 smash hit, All I Want for Christmas is You. Mariah Carey's Magical Christmas starts streaming December 4th. We also want to remind you that our Food for Families food drive is less than a week away. We will have drop-off locations across the area next Wednesday, December 2nd. Non-perishable food items and money are accepted. It's been a rainy day out there on this Black Friday. Let's turn now to meteorologist Mia Montgomery for an updated look at pinpoint radar. Week radar. Over at my house, we had like six tenths of an inch right before it came into work, so it's been pretty soggy. Yeah, Clay, it, it has been a pretty wet start, for, especially for those who have been trying to get out for any of that Black Friday shopping. We are still watching a little bit of activity across the Brazos Valley. The heaviest of that really remains to the south and the east of the Brazos Valley at this hour, but we are still watching some moderate rain just now exiting through Houston as well as Trinity County. And then as we move pinpoint radar a little bit down towards the south here. We are still watching some showers that are trying to hold together as they cross over the I-45 corridor for places like Huntsville, Conroe, and even in San Jacinto County for folks in Cold Spring. And as we head into the next couple of hours, we will continue to monitor pinpoint radar to see if we can't find some more showers pop up across portions of the area. So if you are headed out for any Friday evening plans, I do think a good portion of us will be able to find some dry spots, but still it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep that rain gear with you in the car just in case we do find a few more of these showers start to pop up. As we head into the weekend, we are expecting an even larger chance for rain than what we saw today heading into our Saturday. Then our next cold front comes through and we start to dry things out heading into the beginning of next week. We'll talk more about those rain chances and time them out coming up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Mia. Americans have shattered records for online shopping since the pandemic began. Some analysts predict online sales could hit $10 billion today and reach nearly $190 billion over the holiday season. But the Federal Trade Commission says cybercrime involving social media has more than tripled in the last year. Anna Warner shows us the danger signs. I've learned my lesson. Tennessee great-grandmother Debbie Jackson says she learned how someone can fall for an online scam. It started when she ordered a special Christmas present for her two-year-old great-grandson, Asher, a gift of a three-foot-tall toy dinosaur. That's the other Facebook page that the same ad was on. This ad on Facebook showed kids riding the dinosaur. So Jackson says she ordered one for roughly $200 through the seller's Facebook page. Christina Lewis is Asher's mom. It was supposed to be a riding dinosaur that had a little button that he could press and it would make noises and be interactive. And so we were like, awesome, this is great. He's gonna love it for Christmas. But when the toy arrived in Florida. It is a stuffed animal about this big. Didn't even look like the dinosaur. And so what do you call that? It's a scam for sure. The real toy comes from Play School and the commercial is theirs too. But Lewis says it appears the scammers used the real ad to sell that cheap, much smaller knockoff. It's really upsetting that there's scammers out there that are just putting a bad taste in people's mouth about online shopping. I was really on 
Facebook and Instagram, just kind of scrolling. Christina White from Irving, Texas, saw an ad from what she thought was a legitimate seller on Facebook marketing a body slimming cream. It brought me up to the site. I looked at it, read a couple of the reviews, and I was like, okay, seems legitimate. Let me go ahead and try it. You know, it's 26, 25, 26 bucks. What do I have to lose? What she lost, she says, was close to 25 bucks. The product never arrived. Those stories are being heard more often during the pandemic, says Judith Bitterly from security firm McAfee. What we know is that cyber criminals follow the money and the money is online now. Her company found cyber crime up 12 percent since April. 419 cyber threats per minute. So it's a barrage. It is a barrage. And she says criminals aren't just after the cash. Through gift card scams and fake websites, they try to trick consumers into giving up their private information. Customers will see a, a deal that may be too good to be true, priced really low. They'll go there and ultimately their personal information will end up on the dark web or being stolen. They're after the money and your identity is valuable. Since many scams start on social media, Facebook is now teaming up with the Better Business Bureau to warn online shoppers, donating $75,000 worth of ad space to the BBB for ads like these. Facebook's Sarah Schiff. Our systems are constantly improving and we're evolving our policies to get ahead of people trying to scam people out of money and break our rules. But Debbie Jackson says her experience on Facebook has made her skeptical. They've got more money than God. Why in the world would they not be able to find a problem? Because that isn't the first time. I mean, it's the first time I fell for it, but, it, you know, it's going to be the last. The website Jackson bought the toy from has been taken down. The website White bought her cream from has not. We reached out to them for a response, but have not heard back. Facebook said in its last enforcement report, it had removed 1.3 billion fake accounts from its platform. Anna Werner, CBS News, Berkeley, California. Still to come, News 3's Fallon Appleton is already getting into the Christmas spirit. Plus, of seeing Stone is ready to play you into your weekend with a little free music Friday. You're watching First News at 4 on KBTX. It's the day after Thanksgiving, and that means it's time to start decorating for the holidays if you haven't already. And one place you can go to get your fresh Christmas treats is the College Station Noon Lions Club Christmas Treat Park place that I just keep stumbling over my words of because I'm so excited about <laughs> these fresh trees. And he, we're here with Meredith. Fresh trees, probably cut last Wednesday, Thursday, put on a refrigerated truck Friday, unloaded here in College Station. Monday immediately put in buckets to keep them fresh. Put your face in it. It's just amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That's why we're here so we can really absorb the smell. And you talk so. about absorbing the smell. This is the time where I wish people had the opportunity to have that smell of vision and right. take everything and in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, is that I love is each of these trees are individual buckets to really keep them fresh, which I think is unique. Right. Right, and that's something people need to do is once they get the tree, take it home. So many people forget, keep it in water, keep it. Do you want it to last till Christmas? Yeah. These will as long as you keep the water in them and keep it full, but they're, they're just amazing. We do, we'll cut the bottoms off of some of them, bunt them up a little, uh, cut the end off of it before they take it home, just to give them that fresh cut so that it'll absorb even more water and get that smell out in their house and get the whole smell, house smelling of Christmas. Now, these are only a few of the trees that you'll have. You'll have a right. tons of sizes. Talk about that. We have 450 trees varying uh, from a five foot tree up to officially a 10 foot tree. But if we take our little stick that goes 10 feet, sometimes they're a eh, foot or two taller. Um, the price range, they start at 50 and go up to 195. All the money goes back to the community though. And elaborate on that. What, what parts of the community are y'all working to help impact here? any place there's a need. The Lions started in 19, uh, 1917 and their motto is we serve and it, it truly is that if there is a need there is a lion. That's that. another one of the things we say is if there's a need there's a lion. Um, the Fun for All Playground, vision screenings, um, we've done uh, we actually help with Premier Market, different community events. We've done the fireworks out of the bush just a whole bunch of different things to be able to give out. Again, providing glasses for kids. Little girl that we got hearing aids, little two-year-old girl, the club just said, 
here you go, <laughs> you know, yeah. just to help those that need. Yeah, and I love so. that these are ways, are, Christmas is the time for giving, and these trees are right. a way to, A, celebrate that, but also give back to our community. Right. And a way that y'all are helping, you know, give back and celebrate Christmas, y'all are doing curbside with these trees, too. Yes. It's something we've kind of done a little each year because you have some people that just don't want to come onto the lot and wander. Um, but we'll have a spot on the street set up to where they can pull up, a lion will walk out, find out what kind of tree they want. because. Everybody wants something different. Like, what would you want? You think about how tall are your ceilings? Yeah. You know, how big? Some people want the really big, fat tree. That was my mother. No two, two ornaments alike on that tree. Some of them, you want that tall, skinny one that's just elegant looking. So what kind of tree do you want? How tall do you want? Okay, we can load it up onto their vehicle, or we can arrange for delivery, which is free delivery, but again, donations always, always welcome. Yeah, and donations go to a great place, which I think exactly. is really great. Now, if people want to come and get their tree, you, do you, how many are y'all getting uh, sub supplies in, or how, is, how does this all work? This is it. These are the trees we have. 450, once they're gone, we're gone. And they do sell quickly. Um, 10 to 14 days, typically. They were sold out. We opened on the 29th of November last year and sold the last tree December 9th. Wow. You can't sell it much faster than that. Yeah. So quickly and so when are y'all's hours where people can come and get a tree for themselves today black friday we're open from nine to nine so getting here getting time uh saturdays and sundays nine to nine and during the week uh four to nine all right well so. thank you so much for all this great information if you want to come check out some of these gorgeous fraser firs come over to texas avenue and west king cole it's right next to the old college station police department building if you know where that is it's right also near the college station walmart as well and come check out some incredible christmas trees that also go back to a great cause back to you news three weather from the pinpoint forecast team is sponsored by first financial bank Local bankers putting you first. And now, local weather. Well, kind of all day long, we've just been watching Pinpoint Radar for these rounds of showers and storms that have been moving through the Brazos Valley. And we'll get a quick check at Pinpoint Radar right now. The majority and heaviest portion of all of that activity currently sits to the south and the east of the Brazos Valley. But we are still watching some pockets of moderate rainfall that are moving just out of the Brazos Valley through Houston as well as Trinity counties towards the Lufkin area. And of course, we are still watching some showers that are trying to hold together through the south and eastern portions of the area as well. Now, just worth mentioning, the southern portion of the Brazos Valley is still classified in that one out of five risk for an isolated severe storm. And as of this time, I don't think that that is really likely. But if we were to find a brief severe storm, I think what we would really be monitoring for would be those gusty winds, some pockets of heavy rainfall and the small potential for some small hail. But I'll walk you through your pinpoint forecast as we head into the afternoon and into the evening hours today. You'll notice that a lot of us are expected to kind of see some dry pockets here as we head into the next couple of hours. We will still keep that 30% chance for rain in the forecast, cooling down into the mid 60s by the 8 p.m. hour, low 60s by 10 p.m. Like I said, I do think a lot of us will find these pockets of drier air moving through the area. But still, if you are headed out for any of those Friday night plans, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put the rain gear in the car just in case we do find a few more of those showers. Now, speaking of those rain chances, we have a pretty big rain chance in the forecast as we head into the first half of the weekend. We'll call it an 80 percent chance for our Sunday before our next or Saturday before our next cold front pushes through and then we are really starting to dry things out here for a little bit with a few more of those lingering showers possible on Sunday before we start to drop those rain chances heading into the beginning of next week. So we'll time it out here for your pinpoint forecast. I do think we could see a few more showers develop through the overnight into the early morning hours of tomorrow and this all comes as we start to eye our next cold front really set up in the western portion of the state. Now we still have a decent amount of moisture situated in the central portion of Texas so you'll notice especially Especially as we get closer to tomorrow morning, we really are expected to see kind of just more of these showers and a potential for a few more isolated rumbles to pop up across portions of the area as well. That really is expected to move from the west towards the east here across the Brazos Valley as, three, as we head throughout our Saturday. But then this cold front really starts to push through as we look closer to our Sunday and that starts to bring a little bit more of that drier air and start to clear us out just a little bit as we head into the beginning of next week. But because we are expecting those 
rain chances. Take the jacket if you're headed out to Kyle Field tomorrow to watch the Aggies take on LSU. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. You'll want the jacket for the rain, but you will also want it for the temperatures. It is expected to be just a little chilly with those temperatures sitting in the mid 50s. So with all of those Black Friday plans heading into this evening hours or maybe even just any outdoor plans that you have for the weekend, great idea to keep that KVTX pinpoint weather app nearby so that we can keep you updated on any of these showers and storms as they continue to develop and move through the Brazos Valley. Now, a lot of the rainfall that we've seen today is a result of a cold front that has been pushing southward through the state. Temperatures right now checking in the mid 60s for our northern counties, still low 70s for the southern half of the Brazos Valley. We do still have kind of those gloomy skies as we take a live eye look over campus. Temperatures right now here in Bryan and College Station checking in in the upper 60s, and we do have that north wind on hand of about 8 miles per hour. As we head into the overnight hours tonight, we will be monitoring for a few more of these showers and the potential for a few thunderstorms cooling down into the mid to upper 50s and maybe even some low 60s by the time we're waking up for our Saturday morning. Clay, we're really going to have to watch tomorrow for we have a pretty widespread chance for some more scattered showers and a few thunderstorms before we start to cool out and clear down as we look close to the beginning of next week. Thanks very much, Mia. Wish they had better weather tomorrow for the game. After the break of seeing Stone is ready to play you into your weekend, stick around. It's finally Friday and time for you to enjoy your holiday weekend. We're here to kick it off this afternoon with Free Music Friday. Today we have of Sea and Stone. They're a husband and wife duo featuring beautiful harmonies and fantastic guitar skills. They're from just down the road over in Austin too. Now here they are of Sea and Stone. Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Luke. And we're of Sea and Stone. This is our song, The Day Before Everything. <laughs>
Treat of the Day is sponsored by Smith Dairy Queens. Four students recently graduated from the Blinn College Professional Truck Driving Program with certificates recognizing that they have acquired the skills necessary to earn their commercial driver's licenses. Daniel H. Berg III, James C. Drumgool, Anthony G. Churchick, and Gene R. White each completed the program to prepare for employment in a high-demand field that is experiencing a worker shortage. Blinn's Professional Truck Driving Program consists of two courses, during which students learn to conduct pre-trip, on-the-road, and post-trip vehicle and equipment inspections. Other skills include map reading, managing logbooks and cargo documentation, dispatch procedures, emergency responsibilities, and regulations of transportation agencies. Congrats to all the graduates. And if you have a treat we want to know about it, all you have to do is go to kbtex.com, look for Treat of the Day under the Features category. We'll continue to monitor pinpoint radar here over the next couple of hours to see what kind of more activity we can find across the Brazos Valley. Then we start to look at another cold front heading into our Sunday. Thanks very much, Mia. That's our time for now. For News 3 at 4, thank you for watching. We'll have much more coming up at 5 o'clock. Mark your calendars for Wednesday, December 2nd for the KBTX Food for Families Food Drive.